Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to the new video. And for sure, if you even if if you have solved it, even if you have solved it hundred times, if you know this answer, if you have watched any other video, I highly, highly, highly recommend to watch this video right here because see, there are standard thing. We don't solve the problem. We try and make the intuition. Okay, like how to start off if something like this or something like this comes up. It's never okay. If we are ultimately solving it, let's say by X Y Z algorithm, it's it's never that okay. We will start with that X Y Z algorithm. We start with something else, and maybe we will reach that. So yeah, um, you will see that what we are going to apply. But yeah, for sure, please go through the video for sure from the starting itself because it actually will help you build the intuition. Cool. Starting with the video itself, um, the problem is pretty 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 straightforward and simple. Uh, Non-overlapping intervals. Um, we are having an array of intervals where every interval is just a start i and the end i. Interval simple a start i and the end i. And we have to return the minimum number of intervals you need to remove to make the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. Now, okay, this non-overlapping, how it is defined, it is not given. So we have to go at the example to see how this non-overlapping is defined. But ultimately, what I'm required to do is I have to remove some intervals out of these n intervals. I have to remove some intervals, and after removing those intervals, whatsoever I should get should be a non-overlapping, right? Cool. Now, when it is said, okay, remove some interval. So ultimately, in my mind, I am thinking, okay, what I have to do is I have to remove some interval, or ultimately I can also infer the same thing as I have to take some interval. So at the back of my mind, it is going okay. I have n intervals. I have to remove some intervals. I have to take some intervals out of all those n intervals. Every interval I will have two options: either to remove it or to take it. So I will have two options: remove it or take it. Okay, from here it is starting to building. Okay, ultimately, if I will go greedily, so brute force, it, it means I will have two options. Either for every interval, I will have two options. Either take it or leave it, which means for sure brute force will kind of come in picture. And we have seen a quite a quite a lot of times that okay, if there's an everything kind of okay, it's a brute force exponential exponential, and we have two options either. Take it or leave it. Then maybe we can apply DP for sure because there's just two options, and we can do memorization stuff to actually reach to an answer that it is happening. I will either take it or leave it. Now, okay, it is up till now. While just reading the question itself, we have just thought of okay, I have I can remove it, so maybe I can take the DP path itself. Now coming back to what that overlapping means because ultimately, even if we remove it or take it, whatsoever remains or whatsoever we have. Taken, it should be non-overlapping. So how they have defined non-overlapping, it can be different. So let's just see. It just says that in this example, after removing one comma three as an interval, rest all which is remaining are non-overlapping, which means one comma two, a two comma three, and a three comma four are remaining. So basically, all these three make a non-overlapping intervals. And what we can see is one comma two and two comma three are actually just at two they coincide. But still, they consider this as a non-overlapping interval. So now, from this, I get to know every interval. If it is like this, if it starts from that interval, which means one comma two, if it ends, one interval ends at two, and other interval just starts at two. For sure, still, it's a non-overlapping interval. Maybe if it goes back, if it goes back, if this interval goes back backwards, then for sure it's a overlapping interval. But if it is starting at that particular point to itself where the previous interval was ending, then for sure it's a non-overlapping interval. Now for sure we get to know okay what are the non-overlapping intervals, what they have defined, what they mean by non-overlapping intervals. In an interview you can ask the interview itself okay what do you mean by non-overlapping? Is it exactly less than equal to or actually it is greater than equal to? Cool. Uh, now. For sure, we got to know one thing that okay, we can apply DP, and when we say DP, it's just a standard DP of knapsack, take or not take, take or not take. Now, when we say take or not take, which means what to take, take the ith interval, and when we say we have to grab the ith interval, what we have to check while grabbing it that it should be that I have see when I will grab the ith interval, I have to go and check for the last non-overlapping interval to this ith interval so that I can include it is it's kind of a longest increasing subsequence. Take it, not take it. Right. If I grab the ith interval, I will go. If I grab this ith interval, I have to go and check for the last last interval, which was actually 
not overlapping with this ith interval so i'll go and check for the previous interval which, which was not not overlapping with this ith, ith interval so for short i is for this to check for the previous ones i have the entire previous ones so the capacity will be o of n square but 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 now to take it i will compare so it's 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 very clear i will compare the ith interval with the previous interval right now to compare with the previous interval which means to compare one interval with the other interval um both the intervals need to be very close right because ultimately if i want to compare two intervals it's good that okay three should be as close as possible right so it is i, I ask you is it easy to compare intervals like these like let's say it is first it is second it is third it is fourth or it is easy to compare first second third fourth right i have to compare every interval with the last intervals and when i'm like when i mean by like last interval it means whatsoever intervals have occurred before whatsoever intervals n time is previous which means every interval which has n time less should be occurring before so for sure the one thing which came in mind is I need to compare intervals and for sure I will compare on the basis of either start time or end time. So these needs to be close to each other. So these need to be sorted. Now as soon as the word sorted came in picture, we again have two options that either we can sort by the end time or maybe we can sort by the start time. Although, although you can sort by any time itself is just how you will compare it. So for sure we get to know, okay, we will just sort it down to actually compare these intervals. And when I say compare, I will compare the ith interval with the last interval and we'll see, okay, at what point it is non-overlapping and from that I can increase my dp. But we will see that, okay, the composition will come to O of n square and that won't work. So maybe we can infer that dp won't work. But just holding our horses, what we realized is what we were doing was comparing the ith interval with the last interval, which means that with the previous interval. Now, as we're comparing with the previous interval, we are just seeing, okay, if the end time is so and so and I can take ith for the ith interval, what previous, like most previous interval, like the previous interval, which I can take. So for sure, I also know that I was going linearly to search the previous interval rather than going linearly. I know I have sorted my entire intervals array. Why I can't do apply, why I can't apply a binary search. So to search for that previous interval, I can simply apply the binary search and will bring it down to O of n square. So now, one thing is for sure that okay, I can solve this algorithm, and that's very intuitional. We started with the brute force, we know it's take it, not take it, then we go to the TP solution, then we know it's an abstract, then we move to O of n square, and then we know the O of n square won't work, but we know okay, it is sorted, and we are going back to see what's the previous one. To know the previous one, we can simply apply the binary search, and for sure, we can bring the algorithm to O of n square. But, 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 for sure, if it had been a contest, people would have started with this itself but just hold your horses just a second we have seen kind of interval scheduling problems before where it is always such that it was it is always kind of applying greedy right now although we have known okay this solution above which we have found out it will for sure work and it was very intuitional but as we were viewing that algorithm of uh interval scheduling like intervals like intervals 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 and make that non overlapping and stuff we have seen that it always kind of applies greedily this kind of so why not i can try greedy but are in what if greedy won't work cool if greedy won't work then we know i have a solution of ap plus binary search with me which is o of n o of n log n algorithm for sure i have but if it works the code and logic will be very short very short you will be able to write that very easily so the, uh, it is worth the time to actually invest and get to know and that will be very quick to get to know okay if the greedy would work or not because if it works it will be very short the code will be very short and it will be fast also not in the actual complexity terms but actually in the runtime terms now to know if the greedy will work or not just take two intervals just see for sure if you want to compare two if you want to compare greedy so you have many intervals for sure at any point of time you are comparing only two intervals right and for sure you also know that your intervals were sorted right your intervals are sorted you know that you have two intervals now just try to find all the possibilities for them to compare these two intervals now either i i i i, I earlier told you also if you have sorted it down so you can either compare with the start time or the end time 
for sure here in this case i'm comparing by the end time itself but anyway you can compare now now aryan how to know that uh, how to bring all the possibilities for them a very simple if you have two intervals just fix one interval fix one interval fix one interval and just try to move just try to move the other interval just try to move the other interval just try to move the other interval other interval right move the other interval move the other interval so you will see the interval at the up it is moving it is moving and the interval at the bottom is being constant so one is constant and the other is trying to come close like your like your situation ship right cool now coming back to column okay we fixed we make one interval constant and try to bring other close so as to make all the possibilities in one possibilities one interval is this next in interval is this for sure each one not overlapping so we can take both okay i took both of them now it is again fixed now the the above one it came closer now if it it is coming closer and for sure we know if it is ending at the same if the end and the start is at the same point still we consider them as non overlapping so still we can consider both of them now what if i have one interval like this and one interval like this then which interval to take because i have to skip one interval because they are oh, not because they are non overlapping uh not sure okay cool we we'll look at it later now right now i'm not sure that how which one to take but i'll look i will look at it later now considering one interval is this again the above interval it came close but now it came in close but still like you saw it came in inside my end time but still the out was also out of this end time now the out end time also of the above interval came inside the end time so for sure we know one thing it is small it is big and for sure it is inside this boundary itself so anything if i take it so it will be much better if i just take the above interval rather than the below interval because for sure it is smaller and inside that end boundary itself cool i'll take the above interval and will neglect the bottom interval now again the same thing the above shifted more left again it is smaller ending with the boundary for sure i will take to take the above and leave the below now i'm just trying to see that okay which interval i can take and which i can ignore coming back to this one now which one to take and which one not for sure if we just compare okay if if okay it was one interval and it was other interval right now i can have multiple possibilities okay other interval let's say the next interval maybe it is green one maybe it is red one maybe it is white one now any of it is it is always better that okay i will choose the interval which was ending before because although these both are overlapping now for sure if i choose this interval then i have again option to choose the red one and the green one but if i choose this one this one this above one then i won't have option to either choose white one nor uh, now red nor red one i will only have option to choose green one and i want to choose as maximum as possible so what i will do is i'll try to choose the one which is ending before so that i will just take it and i will have more options to take the next interval so for sure i will try to choose the interval which is ending before if they are overlapping at that point now all the possibilities i have get to know and now i know greedy would for sure work because i will try to take the interval which is ending before right and by this i can try to know okay what are interval i need to ignore now what we figured out was with this simple observation was that if the intervals are kind of overlapping well like this now i will name this interval as an interval and this as a previous interval now if it is the case then the start time of this interval if it is before the end time of the previous interval if it is the case then for sure i have to ignore this interval thing because i don't want to take this interval which means my previous will again remain this previous but you know that i have ignored one interval which means i have skipped one interval which means i have not taken this interval so for sure if i have skipped one interval so please increase your answer by one because you have skipped one interval but you remain but you know one thing right your interval your previous interval will still remain this previous and not it will, and it will not become this when i say previous which means for the next interval upcoming interval your previous will again remain this prep only and not this interval because we have skipped this interval and it will no longer be there now other option was just if it is beyond now if it is beyond simply you know that for sure you, you can take both which means now your previous will become this interval so i'll simply apply my previous as this interval and that's how we got to know by just these two condition if else i can simply solve my answer thus the greedy to actually check if the greedy would work in was worth it for me which means a simple code i just simply initialize my answer by minus 1 you can initialize by answer as is zero also please don't get confused by this initializing answer by minus 1 is it will just say 
if you initialize by minus one, you will have to, if you take the previous interval as the first interval, you will have to start. See, if you initialize your answer by a zero, if you take the previous interval as the first interval, which is which you will for sure take. So you will start your intervals with i equal to one. Remember that. But here in this case, I started my intervals from i equal to zero itself. So for sure, i equal to zero and i equal to zero, which means previous and i equal to zero. Both are same, so both will for sure are bound to overlap. That's the reason I just initialize my with minus one because for sure at i equal to zero, it will for sure become a zero. But you know that you will compare your previous interval with i equal to one actually. Thus, you will simply keep on going here. You will simply keep on going here so that to get your answer. Thus, you know now ki why it is minus one and not a zero. Although you can also have a zero, but then initialize your vector which means initialize your interval starting from i equal to one because you are comparing with the previous interval. Now, coming back to we have simply sorted our intervals down with the end time. You can also sort by the start time itself and no worries at all. Now, com com now coming back, I have my previous interval as the first interval. Now, I will keep on comparing every interval with the previous interval. As I showed you above also, if the end time of the interval, which is the next interval, if it is less than the uh, end, uh, if, if the start time of the previous interval is less than the end time of the previous interval, if the start time of the next interval is less than the end time of the previous interval, which means they both are overlapping. So simply, you have to remove one interval and which means you have to skip this interval itself. So previous will remain previous. But if it is not the case, then for sure my previous will become the current interval. Now, it will just keep on going for all the intervals and ultimately I will have answer which means all the intervals which were removed. And ultimately you saw the compression of this was O of N and log N because you are simply doing the sorting and space is O of 1. And that's how you can simply solve your answer and the code is down below. For sure, here I told you from scratch what you have to think. Take it, not take it. Which means DP was very, very, very intuitional. But, but, but we hold it on and saw the kind of intervals overlapping problems or non overlapping problems are usually done with usually done with greedy so usually done with greedy thus that's a good bet to actually try on and see if the greedy would work or not because if it works then the code will be very short and actually space optimized also that Time would have been this only, but still, it would have been O of n log n plus O of n log n rather than just O of n log n here, right? But still, it is worth the effort to actually try on the greedy and see if it is working or not. That's how you can solve this problem. That's how you can simplify this problem. Cool. Uh, I hope that you guys are getting. See you in another video. Bye bye.